From the beautiful island of Tobago comes the radical voice of power, Bishop Roel Reed of the Mount Grace Open Bible Church. Sunday morning worship service at Mount Grace is at 8 a.m. Patient Sale Open Bible Sundays at 8 a.m. Roxborough Open Bible Sundays at 9 a.m. Castaro Open Bible Sundays at 10 a.m. Junior Church at 8 a.m. Sunday Youth Service at 6 p.m. Tuesdays Healing and Deliverance Service. Wednesdays Prayer Meeting and Bible Study. Fridays Hour of Power. We also provide a daycare and kindergarten school service from Monday to Friday. Office hours Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. For counseling and prayer, call 639-6403 or email us at mountgraceopenbible at gmail.com. God bless you and our doors are open wide to welcome one and all. So long. Bye-bye. 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 Goodbye to my sorrows. Bye bye. Goodbye to my pains. Bye bye. Goodbye to your troubles. Bye bye. Goodbye to your sickness. Bye bye. Goodbye to your griefs. Bye bye. Goodbye to your failures. Bye bye. Goodbye to your debts. Bye bye. Goodbye to your torments. Bye bye. Goodbye to depression. Bye bye. Goodbye to heartache. Bye bye. Goodbye to brokenness. Bye bye. Goodbye to frustration. Bye bye. So long. Bye bye. So long. Bye bye. So long. You are the God of wonders. You are the God of wonders. Hallelujah. You are the God of power. But I believe. I believe, Lord. I believe. Yes. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. So long. Bye bye. So long. Bye bye. So long. Bye bye. Can't hear you. So long. Goodbye to my sorrows. Bye bye. Goodbye to my pains. Bye bye. Goodbye to my troubles. Bye bye. Goodbye to your sickness. Bye bye. Goodbye to your griefs. Bye bye. Goodbye to stress. Bye bye. Goodbye to failures. Bye bye. Goodbye to doubt. Bye bye. Goodbye to fears. Bye bye. Goodbye to torment. Bye bye. Goodbye to depression. Bye bye. Goodbye to brokenness. Bye bye. Goodbye to heartache. Bye bye. Goodbye to sadness. Bye bye. Goodbye to accusers. Bye bye. Programming your mind for a victorious, prosperous, and successful life. And we're going to do part two this morning because it is very important that we program our minds. Satan's main point of attack is our minds. You got to close the door of your mind. Do not give him any entrance to send his fiery darts at your mind. Because if he succeeds, in weakening you in your mind, you will be weak in your spirit and ultimately you will be weak in your body. Because medically it seems like the mind carries the body. You ever feel not to do anything 
and you got up because of your thinking that day and you had a good remarkable day but you you were not feeling that way so our minds are very important and we must program our minds I closed last week telling us our churches are filled with people who are living a defeated life and that's a fact this modern day church is filled with people who are living in defeat And this is the main objective of Satan's attack. To defeat you. And when he does that, he would have succeeded in destroying your fate. Your commitment to Jesus Christ. And many times your marriage and your life. This is why it is very important for us to program our minds. So our churches are filled with people with passive mind. I said that to you last week. When your mind becomes passive, it means therefore that you have stopped use your mental energy to think. What comes goes. What happens? Happens. And that is why Paul talks about those who Satan has taken captive in the mind. So Christians with passive minds are Christians who open up their minds to all kinds of spirits. You know, we will start to show some things to kind of help some of you because I say some deep, powerful things. And I, I'm sure some of you have seen this where a pastor will send the people outside to eat grass and they will eat grass. You see why you have to program your mind? You have to think, even in church, you have to think. Even as I stand here preaching to you, you listen, but you think. May God help us. When your mind is passive and you open up your mind to all kinds of spirit what you are actually doing you are opening up your mind to satan he prowls around seeking to devour christians the whole world is under his influence but we are influenced by Christ so he spends his time trying to conquer us by playing mind games with us and that is why you as a Christian must not open up 
your mind to all kinds of spirits. Some Christian, every spiritual thing or demonstration they see, they just open up their mind and their spirit to it. Let me give you some scriptures. Do not allow Satan to capture your mind. 1st John chapter 4 verse 1 to 6 Beloved, believe not every spirit but test the spirit whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world not what the man says He's saying to us, we must not believe every spirit. Why? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And he told us that we must try or test the spirits. We have become very callous. Try or test the spirit. And you have to do that. Because your pastor may not always be around you. You have to do that as an individual Christian. I like to ponder when... I'm reading the Bible because many false prophets have gone out into the world. You know, in our time, which is the closing time, the world is filled with false prophets. And this is one of the signs of the last days. This is one of the signs of the soon coming of Jesus Christ. Satan knows that his time is very short, so he's going to unleash his agents. Oh my God, help us. Hereby know you, the Spirit of God, so we have a way in which we can know the Spirit of God. It says, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus is come in the flesh is of God. We were trained when we were casting out devils by the legendary Reverend Benjamin Hunt to ask the Spirit. Did Jesus come in the flesh? Because sometimes you hear some people speaking in tongues and you think they are being filled with the Holy Ghost as you're praying for them. <laughs> because sometimes you see some immature preachers. They are being filled. And this time it's demons, you know, Sister Marlene. And everybody gets excited. Why? Because failure to test the spirit. Any place you go as a Christian, do not be quick to open your spirit. You don't allow anybody to touch your body. You don't do that. I personally don't do that. I know who to hug and I know who to stop from hugging me. Especially women. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God. You see, this is hard for the natural mind to comprehend. That Jesus, Yeshua, the very Son of God, very God, 
came in human flesh. So there are a lot of teachings around that Jesus is not God because you cannot kill God. But Christ is God. He was God manifested in the flesh. He came in the form of human flesh. So you should know a spirit of God or a spirit that is not of God. And as far as the Bible is concerned, there is only one spirit of God, and that is the Holy Spirit. But note the man said, many false spirits. Only the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit alone we must yield to. So if you are listening to a man or a woman, a man who calls himself a prophet or a woman who calls herself a prophetess, test the spirit. They'll make you eat more than grass because you're not thinking. And the man continue, and such is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. So the spirit of Antichrist is where? Yeah, already. And then I love what he says. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them so we have got the power to overcome them. We must not allow ourselves to come under their control, under the control of the Antichrist spirit. Because we have the power to overcome them. And I'll show you John Shaw's here why we have the power. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I love that. Greater is he, the Lord strong and mighty in battle, the Lord of hosts, the captain of the armies of heaven. He lives inside of you. So you're not supposed to allow yourself to be overcome by the antichrist spirit i believe the weakest saint who stands in jesus has the power and the ability to resist the antichrist spirit Those are spirits that are trying to imitate Jesus. Counterfeit spirit. So you'll have counterfeit manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Counterfeit gifts of the Holy Spirit. And often said when Moses threw down his rod, the Egyptian magic magician... So they wrote down on what? So why are you allowing yourself to get carried away? Why are you allowing yourself to get carried away? Oh my God. And the man says, They are of the world. They, therefore, they speak of the world. And the world hears them. We are of God. He that knows God hears us. He that is not of God hears us not. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of what? 
error. So know there is a spirit of truth and a spirit of what? Error. So as a Christian, you have to put on your helmet. Put on your thinking cap. Don't be carried away. And that is why I believe that God designed that every Christian should be under a local shepherd. You know why so many Christians are getting mashing up? They're running here and there and everywhere. God designed the human family that every child should be in a home under a father and a mother. Let's suppose as you came out from your mother's home, they just let you go just so you don't know who is your father who, and you're all over the place. What do you think would have happened to you? You would have been a human with a lot of deficiency. That's why you have a lot of Christians with a lot of deficiency. They jump here and there and everywhere. Every Christian ought to have a local church and sit under a local pastor. And sit under a local pastor. The Holy Spirit will never lead anyone into error. Or into wrongdoing. And I emphasize the Holy Spirit. And I want to personalize this. Will never lead you into error. So use your common sense and think. And defend the sanctity of your own mind. By saying at times I am not accepting this. This is not of God. You're not even using word. Or words like this. I don't think that is of God. I passed a stage a long time ago. They said, and we know that we are of God. These are days you've got to know. Go thinking of. Paul said, he that thinks he stand, take heed lest he falls. You've got to know. And stand on what you know. If it's any other thing, God will reveal it to you. God will say, I, I love that my daughter. I love that my son. You stand in. These are days. It is not even safe to have two schools of thought. Because some have that. They don't even know if they are man or they are woman. Because they're attacking their mind. Attacking the children's mind. And make them believe that they really don't know who they are. That's why you've got to program your mind. And when I said program your mind for what? Victory or a victorious life. A prosperous life and a successful life. I'm not talking about money. Because <laughs> today, the, the, the moment you say to people, live a prosperous life, the first thing they just think about is the dollars. I'm talking about your life. I'm talking about your marriage. I'm talking about your family. I'm talking about your soul. What John said. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. 
even as your soul prospers. You must have a prosperous soul so that you can say like the psalmist David, Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, who forgiven all my iniquities, who healed all my diseases, who delivered my life from destruction, so that my youth is renewed like an eagle. So be a prosperous soul. A victorious soul. May the Lord help us. So the Holy Spirit will never. And let me help you right here. Anytime a spirit leading you to do something wrong, something that is not in agreement with the word of God, don't care who that spirit is, because it could be a lying spirit, a deceiving spirit, a worldly spirit. A spirit of bitterness, a spirit of hate. I found out that you have some very intelligent spirits now. Who will calculate things and convince you that this is the right choice. Let me give you a word to back that up. John. 15 verse 26 from the very lips of Jesus but when the comforter is come whom I will send unto you from the father note when the comforter is come whom I will send unto you from the father even the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. So if you're using your common sense, if the Spirit is leading you to do something that will be very displeasing to Christ, you should know. You don't even have to call pastor. You should know that that is a lying spirit and rebuke the spirit. What do you mean? We ought to even rebuke spirits in a prophet if this prophet is operating under the antichrist spirit. You know, we do not give way to these spirits. The Holy Spirit will never lead you into error. Hear what Jesus said again in John 16, verse 13, 14. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Let me just pause here for a while. Because I, I want to help you. I want to help Christians. Because there are many that are listening to us right now. The Holy Spirit will never lead you as a Christian into error. Some of the things that you are hearing today that the Holy Spirit lead me to leave my wife, lead me to leave my husband. Holy Spirit will never. Don't let nobody fool you. The Holy Spirit will never lead you. All these years I learned something about God. 
there are some decisions as it relates to your life. You ask God some things, God ain't answering you at all. God is wiser than that. Because he's called what? The spirit of truth. So his guidance will cooperate with the truth of the word of God. Look at the life of Jesus. He was full of the Holy Ghost. He was led by the Holy Ghost. Look at Jesus. He never did a wrong. He never told a lie. He never did anything to offend God. This might shock you. He never said anything to offend God. Now, there are times when God will leave us to make decisions on our own. Let me just shock you. When God gave the world to Adam, did God decide what Adam should do with the world or Adam make the decision? So do not believe every spirit. Because Christ said here, however when he, the Holy Spirit, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself, but whatsoever he shall hear so I note there that the Holy Spirit has to hear from the Father he has to hear from Jesus and likewise the demon spirit the demon spirits have to hear from Satan so Satan will inspire them to Tell you certain things to motivate you to take certain actions. That's why when you're praying sometimes about something or some things to God and you know that God is not hearing. And let me say as yet, seemingly to you, don't make no decision yet. Don't make decision and say the Lord says, shut up, you're lying. You're lying. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine. And shall show it unto you. Now I can say a lot here. I was showing somebody. What a lot of Christians don't realize. Satan has a way of showing you things and does make you make decision but he will never show you the ultimate end but the holy spirit does so the holy spirit will never lead you to mash up your marriage he'll never leave you to leave your church he has a way of showing you the ultimate he will never lead you to give up Christ because he will show you you'll end up in hell. 
to show you the ultimate. So when you are listening to spirits, use your common sense. Why are the spirits not showing you the dangers and the pitfalls? The Holy Spirit will show you that. Because he loves you that much. So use up your head. Because eh? I realize a lot of Christians. Not using up their head. As it relates to what is happening in the church world. Not the world. You know, the world always have the things going. But in the church world. You have to think. You have to resist some spirits. Christ says, for many will come in my name saying, I am Christ. And I have done this and I have done that. And he said, he will say to them, depart from me. Be he. I never knew you be he cursed into everlasting fire. So, the Holy Spirit will never lead you into error. That's why you have to listen to him. Sometimes you must realize that you have a personal experience, a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. You know what has happened to a lot of, a lot of Christians? They think only the pastor alone have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. He is with you. He speaks to you. You know, that is something I could put my life on it, that the Holy Spirit speaks. And I realize, and my wife could tell you this, I always said to her, girl, I know God will speak to people, but they don't listen. He's always speaking to you, his child. Always. But you don't listen. You don't listen. Develop the habit of listening to the Spirit of God. You know, I used to say this a long time. Something speak to me. I stopped saying that, you know. Boldly, I to say the Holy Spirit. Because after 47 years, if I really don't know his voice, then something is wrong with me. He speaks to every child of his. Learn to listen to him. Learn to listen to him. And if you want to develop the habit of listening to the Holy Spirit, read the Word of God a lot. Just read the Word of God a lot. That will help you. To understand when He's speaking. You can tune in to His voice. Philippians 4 and verse 8. Because I'm trying to help us here with our minds. Programming our minds for a victorious life. A successful life. And a prosperous life. So it means therefore every aspect of your life must be victory. You must be victorious in your Christian life, you must be victorious on your job. You must be victorious in your family life. In a matter of fact, let me put it in order. You must be victorious, prosperous, and successful in your relationship with God. And in your relationship with your husband, with your wife, and your children. And your relationship with your brethren. And you must be 
a good relationship person. You must be a relationship builder. You must be like Job. Job was a very successful liver. The man was so successful as a believer that when he walks the streets, if the young men were cursing, they will stop. If Job in a meeting, when Job starts to speak, everybody will shut them out and listen. He was a defender of the poor. A defender of widows. Orphans. So his life was very successful because he was touching people with his life. He was helping people with his life. He was inspiring people with his life. And you know what the Bible tells us? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all, not some. Everybody Jesus came into contact with. He helped them, even his critics. Some night I was reading in Kings. And I said, what a remarkable testimony. Elisha, bones, raise a dead man. I said, Lord, I want a remarkable life that you have people go by my grave and stand up there and get healed. I said, it's possible. See, it is possible that I live a remarkable life that after I'm gone, my body, people going right there. Say, Pastor Rollberry right here. All the care man jumping by Pastor Rollberry. Oh my God. It is possible. Because Elijah bones brought back the man to life. So aim to be a remarkable Christian. A remarkable person. A remarkable father. A good man who leave an inheritance for his generation. A remarkable woman that you're Children, children will rise and call you bliss. As a church, we must be a remarkable church that they will always talk about. Mom Grace Open Bible. And I'm not talking about the building. Because some people have pretty buildings. But the people in the building are not remarkable people. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Paul seems here to come to a dramatic, dynamic conclusion. And he says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Oh my God, I could see a lot there. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So here is where you could use your common sense and think. If contrary things come into your mind, you should know it is not of God. If people giving you advice and the advice is contrary, you should know they are not of God. It could be your friend. It could be your husband. 
It could even be your pastor. So this was Paul's advice. And he was saying, use your mental faculty. Do some thinking. Remember we start with Joshua where God told him to use his mind, program his mind. Meditate day and night. So if I lie on my bed and contrary thoughts come in, what I ought to do? Stop it. Resist it. It's not of God. Contrary genes. It is not of God. Stop it. Let me read it from another translation. Finally, believers, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honorable and worthy of respect. You know, you've got to think. God will not lead you to do something disrespectful. Like when I was talking, the the, the earlier comment um, a while ago, coming and watching Pastor Reed on a hospital bed there. God lead you. Mash up your marriage. Mash up your relationship with your church. And you're outside smoking. Cursing. You have to think as a child of God. You have to think. Finally, believers, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatsoever is right and agree or confirmed by the word. So if a spirit or somebody is giving you an advice, that does not agree with the word of God, what do you ought to do? Reject it. And more so if it's a, if it's a so-called prophet, a false prophet. How in the world that God will say to you, thus says the Lord, it is time to have a more intelligent wife. Uh, listen all that on YouTube. <laughs> Where this man of God had a so-called prophetess that was programming him to leave his wife. Actually controlling him. You all don't notice how I just move. You have to be careful of the women around you in church you know, because they love to control him. This woman was controlling this man of God until she leads him to almost abandon his wife. My wife can't even control me. When I do control, I help manage. That's why I'll never have anybody controlling me because I don't control people. I help manage. When the Bible says in Genesis, and he shall have rule. That word rule does not mean to control. There is a Hebrew word that implies to help manage. So as a husband, you ought to have the skill to help manage your wife. Not a control. Not a, not a control at all. What Peter told us, don't be Lord or exercise control over God's heritage. No pastor is supposed to control the people. He help manage the faith. Help them to develop skills to manage their own life. Not to control. Because look at me. God don't control nobody. If God used to control us, we'd have never made any mistake. God helps us to manage. When he gave this world to Adam, his intention was Adam will come to him 
for the skills to manage the world. But what he did, he gave it to Satan. What did Satan did? Take it and control it and control his life. Parents must help manage, not control. You have some parents, they'll control every facet of your life. The children, because sometimes I hear things, somebody will say, they, they want to go and study. The parents will say, you have to study. You have to. I say, you have to study this. Mm -mm. Go and get that power. You ought to help manage. Not a control. And you have a lot of controllers today. You know. The Jezebel spirit is a controlling spirit. You know. Help manage. So think on things that are pure. Whatsoever is pure and wholesome, whatsoever is lovely and bring peace and bring peace. Whatsoever is pure and wholesome, whatsoever is lovely and bring what? Peace. If you're having no peace, it is not of God. Whatsoever is admirable and of good repute. If there be any excellent, if there be any excellent, if there be anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things center your mind on them and implant them into your heart. So you're not there that you have the power to program your own mind. <laughs> you have the power to influence your own human personality. He said, personality is influenced by birth, or from birth rather. But you know, they are going to this scripture, I have the power, the ability to influence my own human personality. So I can program myself as a man to be a very loving and kind man. You can program yourself as a woman to be a very lovely, a very kind or loving rather person. As a wife, you can do that. Like that woman in Proverbs 31. Note she was a remarkable woman. She programmed herself to be kind and loving and caring. And consider it. Or you can allow the devil to program you to be like Jezebel. When Jezebel comes in tongue, everybody trembling. You know? Only strong men that stand up against Jezebel. You know? I studied Jezebel. When Jezebel is in tongue, men knees trembling so. And one thing I learned down through the years. When a strong man is in tongue, Jezebel does keep quiet. But if no strong one is in tongue, everybody must come under her control. That's why I like to rough the hell out of Jezebel, wherever I find him. I rough up a lady once in um, one of them hotels. She got shaken so much that they moved her from Tobago and sent her to a Caribbean island. I don't know who in the world tell that woman that she could treat me as the others. Later on, I found out that everybody used to be afraid of her. I don't know 
you know, and sometimes I'm, I'm in a very good mood, eh? So I just leave your box in me and I'm saying, God bless you. But when you see I want me thinking cap, I'm ready to crash you, you know. If you're a Jezebel, you know. No, there comes a time you have to be like God. God will just leave things. Let things happen. God does do that sometimes. And he's the all-powerful God. But when God stands, you know what happened? And sometimes you have to do that. You can't just always fight in, fight in and let people take your energy. You ought to be wise. Sometimes you just leave that. You have a Jezebel wife, sometimes just leave her. <laughs> well, there comes a time you have to stand up. Always fighting, fighting, fighting. Is the energy going there? So I just use that on people sometimes. I just leave, but if I say enough is enough, when I draw the line, I'm ready to do like what he guided him is Jehu, the prophet. It was a prophet who pushed it through a window and dogs lock up, um, lick up her blood. They need to do that in the church. He was with some of these Jezebel people. I tell you that thing. The first time I saw it, I heard they talk about it, but I saw it. Tell the people to go and eat grass. And they go outside taking grass. I say, but what kind of thing is this? See, really, the preachers really had to preach and help Christians. See one, I say, what kind of madness is this? Take out money and say, you buy the bank, they watch the money, and when they watch the money, you gain a manifestation. I say, this is devil. <laughs> Lord, the money are power. <laughs> People not using their mind. <laughs> Let me just give you one, one more scripture. So we have communion. Titus 1 verse 15. To the pure in heart and conscience, all things are pure, but to the defiled and corrupt and unbelieving, nothing is pure. That is powerful. Their very minds and consciences are defiled and polluted. Let me close with this statement. Do not allow Satan and his organized force of demons to corrupt or to defile your mind. And do not allow people to defile your mind. You've been viewing the ministry of the Radical Voice of Power, Bishop Raul Reed of the Mount Grace Open Bible Church. Join us again for another power-packed session. And remember, one touch from Jesus and your life will never be the same again. To obtain a copy of this message, call our office at 639-6403. God bless you.